Hello, my name is David Newell. I'm the Business Development Director for MATCOM in Southeast Asia. I'd just like to present this paper on flexibility and hygiene in the dairy industry. The dairy industry is a balancing act. A key trend in at least many parts of the world is that the number of different formulas and packing alternatives are exploding. Parents are prepared to pay more to assure their child gets the best possible nutrition. And they are also prepared to pay more for convenience. Companies can be more competitive by differentiation. However, have to balance the needs of the consumer. So safety is a huge driver in the industry. Some of the industry trends and challenges include increasing the product variety, as we've mentioned, changing diets around the world. Some is an aging population, so there needs to be formulas suited for that age category. There's tighter quality, quality requirements, traceability, there's a tougher capex justification, and there's an increasing cost of materials and labour. So why are Matcon in this industry? Matcon are well positioned to operate in the market. This is based on our pharmaceutical experience over a number of years. We can deliver the right level of hygiene required. However, compared to other technologies in the pharmaceutical industry, Matcon is a very robust, low maintenance equipment. and does a very good job. In addition, we also offer exceedingly good discharge capability using our cone valve IVC system. Some of the traditional technologies in the industry include mixing towers, pneumatic conveying systems, and tilting tote IVCs. Some of the issues with mixing towers is that they're difficult to clean. There's a lot of equipment required in, in a static mixing tower. So much so that they tend to lend themselves to campaign manufacture. Therefore, they manufacture tons and tons of the same product before they have time to clean down, which takes several hours or maybe several days and change to another product. So the, the change over times are very low. Also, the contamination risk in this setup is quite high. There is no flexibility. So manufacturers tend to manufacture to a stock rather than to an order. The buildings are very tall structures and they can be anything from 10, 15, 20 meters tall. And the result of that, there's a high utility ongoing cost within the building. So compared to mixing towers, the Matcon IBC system has the benefits of productivity, efficiency, and the product quality. However, with the issue, there's very good homogeneity of the blend with a very low RSD or CV value. There is a high degree of flexibility with an IBC blending system where the IBC is the blending vessel itself can be taken out and cleaned offline. So it's easier to clean correctly. There is less building height. An IBC blender would take up a height of maybe about 3.5 meters. Having more flexibility allows manufacturers to make to order rather than make to stock. Also, quality sampling can be done at any point and easily. With pneumatic conveying systems, some of the issues with these are they're difficult to clean. They're quite very long pipe runs in some cases. There is a quite a high 
risk of contamination due to difficult cleaning. Also, material can tend to segregate. So a blended material could segregate and the heavy particles and light particles become separate. Maintaining integrity of the material is also difficult. Friable materials would tend to break down in the long conveying line. Also, there's a high degree of cost within the utilities of running conveying pumps and motors. So compared to pneumatic conveying, the MACON system has all the benefits. High capacity, some of the IBCs are used off directly under spray drying towers, and they can run 10 tons an hour and upwards. They can be fully automated filling and discharge. It is a closed system, so dust containment is very, very good. And they're very efficient. But some of the issues that um, you don't have with an IVC system compared to conveying is that they're, they're more effective to clean and easier to clean. They can be dry washed with no bacteria risk. There's no risk of cross contamination you can move the IBC from one process to the other, you get full flexibility. Also, the product integrity is maintained. And the cone valve discharge provides a control feed to a process. And also, you can handle any type of different powders. Tilting toped IBCs, um, some of the issues with those is they're not hygienic. The, the tote IBC has a trap door on the outlet, and this has to tilt on the side to allow discharge, which is difficult to con control dust. So the, the tilting door makes it difficult to have a control feed to the process. Also with the tote IBCs, they need to tilt, which again is a, an operator safety problem. As the there's an uncontrolled feed due to the tilting door, it is difficult to maintain the homogeneity of the blend. Also to have 100% discharge, there is quite a noisy vibration system fitted externally to the tote discharge system. So compared to tilting totes, the Macon system provides the flexibility, productivity and safety without the issues. This is more hygienic. It has a hygienic filling connection and a hygienic discharge connection. So it's quicker to fill and quicker to discharge. There's no contamination risks. There's no external vibration required for discharge. There's a control feed using the cone valve system, so there's no secondary feeders. It's easy to automate and the blend homogeneity is very good. So the MATCON system provides very good hygiene. It provides dust-free transfers of the filling connection and the discharge. And during the blending process, uh, we blend inside the IVC. But the IVC is the blending vessel. There's no transfer into a fixed mixer and out of a fixed mixer. Also, all the MATCON equipment allows for European EHEDG design. So there's no bug traps or bacterial growth possible.
Inside the IBC, there's a smooth surface. The IBCs can be dry cleaned. There's also the traditional wet washing of the IBC, detergent addition and rinsing and drying. The connections into and out of the IBC can be dry cleaned and they're designed also to be quick release or clean off place. The Malcolm IBC system provides good hygiene. This can be used to save building cost. The IBC system can be used in a grey area or a medium care area because it's a closed system. We can also use it to discharge into a high hygiene area as a, as a photo on the right where we're discharging into a packing room which is enclosed. This saves on utility cost. The, the high utility cost is in the high hygiene area, not in the grey area or medium care area. Another example of zoning of multiple floors, if we have a gravity feed system where the, the floor on, on the top, the third floor, the bags can be cleaned, uh, the outer layer can be removed and the plastic bag transfer on a conveyor through a tipping station with a sieve and then the product would enter into the IBC on the second floor. From there on in, it's a fully closed system. The IBC blending, discharge, IBC cleaning is all due on that second layer level. So that means the second level could be a medium care area. Below we have the packaging hall. That would be the high care area. So the whole building does not to be, need to be high care area rated. You could zone it differently depending on the level and the layer of the building. The Matcon IBC process is, as we mentioned, flexible. So we use the decoupling of the processes. The tipping of the bags into the IBC is a separate process to the blending of the IBC, which in turn is then used to discharge into the packaging line, whether it's a pouch, a canning line or a sachet. But all those three processes are happening at once. So realistically, you could be filling one IBC with recipe A, blending recipe B, packing off recipe C. And also offline, you can clean the IBCs with a, a washing system, a dry cleaning system or a wet washing system, and then just bring the IBC back to the sack tipping part of the process. So the IBC blender is designed to mix any recipe any time. There's no cross contamination. There's no cleaning of the blender because the IBC is the blending vessel. So from a lean manufacturing point of view, we maximize the overall equipment effectiveness, the OEE, which means that the blender is always available for blending, not waiting a long time for loading and loading and cleaning. There's also, as mentioned, building space savings. We reduce the clean room space due to zoning. We all can also blend multiple size IBCs within the same blender. And this is an example of that. Um, in this case, the IBC blender is in the production floor. We have the larger IBC, 2000 litres. We have the medium IBC, 1000 litres, and the very small one, which is 300 litres. All of which can be blended in the one IBC blender. This is very useful for different batch size runs to suit the larger throughput customers and the small one-off 
thatches for more variety products, as well as a space small IBC used for new R&D recipes. As we mentioned, the blend hemorrhage into the IBC blender is, is very good, very low, uh, typically 5% of CV value. Um, but here we have a, a way of detecting the homogeneity. This is near infrared technology, and it's a, a device which is fitted to the lid of the IBC, and that radio signal transmits back to a control system. The NIR is detecting a, a datum point, an ingredient within the blend, and it's looking for a change of wavelength from that material as the blend progresses. Here's an example of the NIR samples. At the start, uh, we're looking for a stabilizing trend, and the stabilizing trend is quite erratic at the start, which is what you'd expect. But as the time progresses, that stabilizing trend gets more stable. So this is a indicator of the homogeneity. The blend, as it reaches the 12 or 30 minute mark, is very stable. And that's the indicator that the blend is homogeneous. So that signal can stop the blender and give a feedback to the, the operator that the blend is finished. The reason why NIR was, is used is that it really eliminates the amount of sampling of a blend that's required. This was always a bugbear in some industries, such as pharmaceutical, where a batch can be sitting in queue, waiting for the QA to, to get the samples back from an external lab. Whereas here we can actually measure online that the blend is homogeneous, homogeneous and it can move on to the, to the next step by packing very quickly. So this makes the whole process more efficient. So MatCon as a solution in the dairy industry is that we satisfy the manufacturer's requirement to provide consumer safety, but we also are able to provide the flexible system to ensure the manufacturers can have a wide range of product diversity 